Tomb Raider 2 is considered by many the best of the original five. If I take off my nostalgia glasses for the first title, I can't argue that. Better environment and better level design. However, looking back at the sequel, there's not a whole lot of Tomb Raiding that takes place. But this didn't bother me. This game is a classic and took the 1996 hit to the next level, as a sequel should do. If you were bothered by the lack of Tomb Raiding, they made up for it in the last revelation. 18 levels make up Tomb Raider 2, and I'm ranking them from my least to most favorite. This ranking is based off of my own experience playing this game, so let's begin. Number 18, The Deck. The deck feels like a massive yet empty cave. Without a walkthrough, you can easily get lost with little to no direction. It's my least favorite level in Tomb Raider 2. This feels like a level they wanted you to explore, but with it being so bland, I can't help but feel bored. Tomb Raider is supposed to be all about the exploration, but this level just wasn't it. Number 17, Offshore Rig. Lara awakens in her locked cell, and just like in Tomb Raider 1, we have a level where Lara's weapons have been taken from her. You don't have to wait long, though, before she gets her dual pistols back. There's just nothing special here. Rearm yourself and fight to escape. This just feels a little too generic for me. I think Natla's mind's done this better in the original game. Number 16, Diving Area. The last level before Lara dons her new wetsuit look, Lara takes on many enemies here and must climb that ridiculously long ladder. My arms would be like rubber bands before I even got halfway up. Also, we now have goons walking around with flamethrowers. If Lara gets lit up, you have such a limited amount of time to find water before she burns alive. Definitely an upgrade from Offshore Rig, but the level design having to climb that ladder twice what were they thinking here? Number 15, 40 Fathoms. Water levels really aren't my thing, and 40 Fathoms drops you in the water with just a little time to find the path out before you drown. If you're playing this for the first time, nine times out of 10, you're drowning. I forgot to mention the sharks. They'll be on your trail, so move quickly as possible. Barracudas? Yeah, they're here too. Number 14, Living Quarters. This is a continuation level of the wreck of the Maria Doria. Laura enters the engine room. This level is puzzle heavy, and you'll have to reconfigure pistons to eventually access more of the ship. Seeing Laura run barefoot across all these rusted sharp edges makes me hope that she's had her tetanus shot. I more so enjoyed the second half of this level than the machinery part. The theater room is pretty freaking cool, and I just love the decor of the ship, but we'll get into that a little bit more when I talk about the wreck of the Maria Doria level. I must not forget, the eel hiding in the dark cave? Man, they're wrong for that one. Number 13, The Dragon's Lair. A rather short level, the Dragon's Lair is the ending to our story. Our antagonist turns into a giant dragon and Lara must do a certain amount of damage to defeat it. I remember facing this thing for the first time and I panicked at the size of it. Avoid its fiery breath and just do what you do in Tomb Raider. Side jump and unleash your weaponry on this beast. Number 12. Catacombs of the Talion. Beneath the Barkhang Monastery, Lara enters the catacombs. The catacombs are dark and they slightly remind me of the unknown in the Sanctuary of the Skion level in Tomb Raider 1. You'll never get through here without flares, and trust me, you're gonna wanna see, because for the first time, we encounter yetis. I love when Tomb Raider can come across as scary, and it definitely has its moments wondering what's in these dark areas. Number 11, Floating Islands. Probably the oddest level I can remember in the entire franchise of Tomb Raider. The Floating Islands is like a mystical dream. 
Combat does exist here, but it is second to the platforming. One mistimed jump or a slip on a slope sends Laura falling into what seems to be a never-ending black pit. The warrior enemies will fly to attack, so taking them out at a distance is key. Get some very spooky vibes here. Number 10. Opera House. The Opera House is abandoned with dim lighting. Maneuvering around this level can be quite tricky. You'll not only have to worry about Bartoli's thugs and their mean dogs, but sandbags that randomly fall from the rafters, broken glass, and swinging crates. There's just something eerie about this place, and I like it. Like I said, Tomb Raider from time to time can go hand in hand with adventure and horror, and the Opera House is unsettling for some reason. Number 9. Wreck of the Maria Doria now I know I placed a lot of the water levels towards the end of my list, but man, this one is just beautiful. The Maria Doria was a luxurious ship that sunk to the bottom of the sea, and it's where we explore in this 8th level of Tomb Raider 2. Off of the beauty alone, this level is masterful. After handling our armed enemies, I found myself lost, in a good way, exploring this ship. The ship is upside down, and many traps and hazards await Lara. And originally this was supposed to be the Titanic, but something changed that. Imagine in 1997 going to see Titanic in theaters, and coming home to explore it in Tomb Raider 2. Number 8. Home Sweet Home Home Sweet Home is the perfect finale. This time the enemies come to Laura's stomping grounds. Here you run around her manor laying waste to the very last enemies of the game. No puzzles, really no platforming, just full-blown combat, and it's a lot of fun. Number 7. Ice Palace This could have easily been the best snow level. The final boss battle with the Guardian is a bit underwhelming, the Guardian is a 20-foot eagle, and it can be easily taken care of by using a cheat method. All of that room to fight this thing, but it's not necessary. Visually, I love all the ice and the colors of the Ice Palace. It actually feels cold. Battling Yetis and outrunning an avalanche, what a time. Number 6. Barkang Monastery the freedom you have in what seems to be a pretty large level is nice. You have to collect five prayer wheels that are scattered throughout the monastery, and it's up to you to decide if the monks help you out or you become their enemy. Sometimes that's difficult because if you accidentally hit one of them, it just started a war. Number 5. Bartoli's Hideout if you enjoy the Venice level, then you are most likely going to enjoy Bartoli's Hideout. It's a continuation of Venice, just without all the boating exploration. Here you take on Bartoli's goons and explore his grounds. This Bartoli dude is a lunatic, as he was expecting you. He set traps around, hoping to catch you up. Whether it's the timed flames, or the armor guys dropping their swords, you'll need to time everything. Blowing up the building to access the next level is as Lara Croft as it gets. Number 4. Tibetan Foothills I still believe this is the best snow level in Tomb Raider 2, but using the snowmobile should be way more fun than it actually is. You're introduced to a new vehicle, and unfortunately there isn't much space to go wild with it. You have to steer the snowmobile down very narrow paths, but you do have moments where you can run down enemies. That's pretty exciting. I just wish there was a little more breathing room to go all out on this snowmobile. Number 3. Temple of Shin. I believe if any level is supposed to define this game, it's this one. You have to love the early fake out in this level. Just as you think you've wretched the dagger, the floor lets out, sending you into a much difficult hell below. The further down you fall, the more you realize how complicated it's going to be to get all the way back up there. This is honestly the best level in Tomb Raider 2. 
but not for me. As it does test your skills, it is quite frustrating. With all the traps that await you, you can guarantee it's too late for some of them and death is a given. Just don't forget to save. Number 2. Venice The Venice violins are so nostalgic. Straight out of an action movie, Venice allows you to drive a vehicle for the first time in the series. If blowing up mines, running along awnings, and taking a massive leap through glass windows for the finale is your thing, then this is it. Driving the boat can feel a little clunky, but man is this a blast. Number 1. The Great Wall You better have played Tomb Raider 1 before you start the sequel. The Great Wall is an opening level that isn't for the faint at heart. Full of tigers, spiders, traps, and even two, yes, two, T-Rex, they pulled no punches. I remember dying so many times when the two boulders chase you, and for the longest time I never even knew of the secret that lived way down deep in the valley pit below. Most people were so eager to use a zipline when they saw it and completely missed out. I was one of them. This is a prime example of how to start a video game. Just straight out intense. Many Tomb Raider games have come and gone, but nothing beats the originals. The mechanics of those first five titles were peak Tomb Raider in my opinion. If you haven't played Tomb Raider 2 in a while, it's a nice treat to go back and play such an iconic PlayStation classic. Number 3. 